I've been using Android phones for the past six months or so and recently I just switched back to the iPhone of the iPhone 11 and I think now is a better time than any to show you what I have on my iPhone 11 and more importantly how I edit my photos using this phone. So let's jump into it. So before we get started, if you're interested in the wallpaper, I will link it in the description below so you can find it there. Anyway, uh, let's get started. The first app I have here is the calendar. I think the iOS one is actually really good. Uh, Google Calendar is fantastic as well, but I've been using this one for a long time and it's been pretty good. Um, photos, I don't really need to go into. This is just where I have obviously all my photos. Um, camera is the camera, you don't need me to jump into that. And the clock is obviously the clock where I have numerous alarms set for all sorts of different times anyway. This second row is where things get slightly more interesting, I guess. The App Store here is one of the first things I have, and I quite like looking through the App Store. I think iOS and Apple do a really nice job of kind of like introducing you to apps. I know Android and the Play Store start doing similar things recently, but I really like these cards, and actually reading through them sometimes is just genuinely kind of interesting and finding out about the companies that made it and those sorts of things. I just quite like it. I think Apple do a good job of that. So sometimes I'll have a read through there. And it's nice to see what's going on in the App Store as well, make sure I'm not missing out on loads of stuff. Anyway, on here is Twitter. Twitter is my favorite social media. So if you're not following me on there, do pop a follow. It's at Byte Review. This is where I keep everything up to date and I post nice little pictures occasionally, things that the iPhone has taken sometimes and sometimes stuff from my camera. Twitter is actually a really nice place to go if you're into tech. You can follow lots of creators. We're all on here. And everyone has uh, is generally pretty nice and it's a good place to interact and talk to people and find out stuff and that sort of thing. So yeah, Twitter is my favorite next to Instagram, of course. Twitter is number one. I have Messenger here as well, which is uh, something I can't get out of. There's some people I only talk to through Messenger. It seems to be the best way to get a hold of them. But I don't really use Facebook at all. My recommendation if you find you're using Facebook too much or you're checking it all the time is actually to delete the Facebook app from your phone and just have Messenger because Messenger is the essential part, right? but the rest can be forgotten about in my opinion. Mail here, I actually use the iOS mail client for most things, apart from not the really important accounts. So these are just like old emails that I have all tied up with, you know, lots of old things, that sort of thing. But I think the iOS mail app is actually quite nice. On the third row here, I have YouTube, of course, for keeping track of everything and watching YouTube. YouTube is my main form of entertainment obviously in next to Netflix and that sort of thing. I spend most of my time on YouTube and obviously because I upload there, I absolutely love it. So YouTube is fantastic, use that a lot. YouTube Studio is where I can keep track of all my videos and see how they're doing. A lot of creators talk about this, but it's a, just a great place to keep track of analytics and all things like that. It's a fantastic little app and really, really useful for that sort of thing. Um, Notes app, iOS Notes app is actually, I find really, really good, really helpful, really useful and uh, use it all the time for those sorts of things. I actually use it with the Apple Pencil quite a lot. It's fantastic for that. And OneDrive is actually the only cloud storage system that I pay for. And I'm not sure why I fell into OneDrive. I think it's because it came free with a Samsung phone at one point. And then I've just been using it ever since, but I pay, I actually pay for this. So I've got a terabyte of storage on here and it's just really useful to have all my files with me on the go. And uh, I can share stuff from there with other people. And it's just a really good cross-platform app. I think Microsoft make nice mobile apps now, or they have for a while. OneDrive's really good. Messages here for people that are still using iMessage. Because I'm in the UK, actually, WhatsApp kind of takes over massively from ev for everything here. So not many people use iMessage or, you know, or Messenger so much. It's always WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp's owned by Facebook anyway, so <laughs> you can't really escape it. Uh, Imgur or Imager is just like a app I've talked about loads before actually on this channel and it's basically just a big lo load of memes and stuff you can look through. I don't actually use it anywhere near as much as I used to so that might come off the homepage soon. Instagram of course is a wonderful place where I get lots of inspiration for videos and aesthetic and things like that. There's loads of really cool accounts on here that I really enjoy following. Um, a lot of them are like this Milk Plus is really good and it just gives me some idea of uh, of kind of aesthetic -y choices and stuff. So if you watch my videos, you'll notice I always scroll these in videos because I think they look really nice. This is one of my favorite ones. Uh, they just make such amazing art. I've got a print of this on the wall somewhere. Whoever this person is, I absolutely love the art and I think it's fantastic. It's definitely worth a follow if you're if you're into these sorts of things. Like Ones like that are just so cool. I mean, I absolutely love it. Anyway, coming out of Instagram, uh, do give me a follow. It's at Bite Review. Obviously posting lots of nice pictures and uh, keeping up to date on here as well and stories as well. I do post quite a lot of stories in terms of like what 
you know, videos are just posted and things like that. So, so do keep up to date. It's definitely worth it. That's app by review. Apple News is a good news app. Um, I don't have the News Plus or anything like that. I check it every now and then just to keep up to date with top stories and those sorts of things. Settings, no need to explain there. Gmail email I have here, which is for my Byte Review account, and that's got notifications switched on. So when I get an email for that, it pings, and when I get an email for everything else, it doesn't ping. So I know it's important if it comes through there. But more interesting than all of this is this little one here, which is a folder called Photo Editing, which has got all the apps I use to edit photos. And I wanna show you some stuff in here because a lot of people have asked me how I edit my photos, how I get my Instagram feed looking like it does, which is kind of all this pastel -y stuff. Um, so I'll give you a quick rundown. So basically, I use this middle app here called Imaging Edge Mobile, which gets all the photos off my Sony camera, which is the A7 III. I can't show you that now because I'm filming with it up here. Um, this is what's filming this. And then I'll transfer them into my photos. Once I've done that, I'll jump straight into Visco. And I've talked about Visco a thousand times before, but this is one I imported just to, to give you an example. So um, I'll load up this one. And then I always like using the C presets. Um, anything from C, like C2, C1, sorry, to C9 is what I use. I generally speaking go for C2. C2 just gives it that kind of look that I really like straight away. Now what's important to remember is the look isn't just coming from that preset. The look is everything I've got in that frame. So these neons over the side and the box art and all that stuff around it. That's what's giving it the pastel look. I'm just enhancing it with these. Anyway, I'll apply that preset and I'll jump into here and then I'll just kind of play around until I think it looks quite nice. One of the things I always do is bring up the shadows quite a lot. So something like that and I'll bring down the highlights a little bit because the neons on the left here can be pretty intense. So I'll bring those up, something like that. And then usually I'll always go over to, um, I'll, just, I'll just correct little things like white balance if I think it needs it. Um, sometimes things go a bit blue or a bit too orange, so I'll find like a happy medium. It's usually a very small kind of like little bit there. I might add a bit of pink in with the tint as well. Uh, adding pink in with the tint can, can add to the overall look in Instagram as well. And then the last thing I always do is I'll zoom in and then I'll add a teeny bit of grain, which will just give it that kind of film look, which I really like. And I'll just, sometimes I add a bit of a fade as well, which is just raising the shadows even more and uh, something like that. And, and that's kind of how my photos end up looking. So they look like that, I'll hit next. I'll save it to my camera roll through Visco, and then I'll literally jump straight back into Instagram. And then there's my edited photo. I'll hit next and I always use the same one, which is this one. And then I'll whack it down a bit. I won't have it on full because it just takes it over the top, but I'll probably you know, do about 40%, hit done and then you know write my caption here blah 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 and then post it and that's kind of how i edit photos in general so it's always in visco and it's always those filters c1 to c9 so i do use some other apps as well lightroom i use for more like serious edits if that makes sense so for photos i want to correct and all those sorts of things and things that i do on my computer i do through there as well and then they all pop up on this phone it's fantastic it's a bit it's a little more to get into than visco so i won't dive into it but for like photography jobs and things like that, I won't use Visco, I'll use Lightroom because it's just a bit more robust. Afterlight's really good for adding like dirt and, and grain and things like that to photos. Occasionally I'll do that if I think it needs it. Um, and it kind of just gives it a bit more of a texture and a feel to it, which is nice. Enlight I haven't used in a long time, um, but that's just another editor. Unsplash is a place to get stock photos. I haven't used it since I got this phone, but it's a really fantastic resource. I absolutely love um, that one. That's good for getting backgrounds as well. If you're a bit stuck for phone backgrounds, love Unsplash. One app that I've really got into recently is this Focus One or Focus, which basically uh, lets you pick a image that you've taken in portrait mode, and then it will let you redo, it will let you refocus basically, which is really quite interesting uh, and how it works. And you can also dial up how much uh, bokeh you want uh, you can obviously go over the top there, which is a bit too much, which is a bit crazy, but that's uh, that's kind of how it works. One of the things I really like it though is this little lighting thing. So when you go into that, you can actually see where the phone has captured the depth, which is just crazy interesting. And you can see how it's kind of picked apart each bit in the scene. The lighting thing is actually there so you can add like a, a little light in a certain part of it and you can move it around. So if you want, uh, for instance, the face to be a bit brighter, you can just do the face, those sorts of things. Anyway, it's crazy interesting just to see it. Sometimes I open it just to see what the, they've done in terms of picking apart the photo. Uh, crazy interesting. 
and uh, it's a quite useful app anyway. Unfortunately, you do have to pay to unlock loads of features on here, like all of these lens ideas, but for simple stuff, it's actually really nice. So that's the Focus app or Focus or however you mention it. Anyway, last one I've got there is the Moment camera app. I haven't actually used this since I bought it um, on this phone because basically what it does is it lets you use the Moment lenses on your phone, but it also lets you shoot in log if you're interested in firing, uh, shooting video. But basically I got this anamorphic lens and this app will let you pick uh, what lens you're using and it will de-stretch it. So if you're unsure what anamorphic stuff does, it gives you those like JJ Abrams lens flares, which a lot of people really like. And uh, this little lens will give you that, but it squeezes the images together and then it stretches them back out. It's kind of hard to, to explain, so I'll, I'll show you anyway and you can see what you think. But the app from Moment is actually really powerful. If you're a filmmaker or, you know, getting more into raw photography, this is actually a really fantastic app to, to use and get used to because you can shoot 4K at 24, loads of different options here, there and everywhere, full manual control. Super interesting, super good app from Moment. It's, it's expensive though, it's like six quid. I think on Android it's cheaper, which is just annoying. Down the bottom here are the like the main apps, so things that never move, phone, Safari, WhatsApp, like I said, if you live in England, WhatsApp is the go-to. Everyone uses WhatsApp for everything, iMessage, things like that, people kind of use, but really the, the one you wanna use is WhatsApp. And of course, Spotify, which is where all my music comes from. Um, and this is the sort of stuff I've been playing at the moment. Anyway, if I come out of there, I can go over to the second page. Now the second page is kind of like miscellaneous, like really stuff that I don't use that much. The first one is the Google Suite. So these are things I use uh, kind of occasionally when I'm transferring between Android, I'll uh, keep these on the go just so everything's synced up. Docs is great for writing scripts, Drive, some odd bits here and there. Trello I've talked about before, which lets me have all of my uh, video ideas all in this nice kind of laid out sort of thing, which I really like. And Google Keep is a great note keeper as well. And Google Photos, so I can keep up to date with my Android photos on the iPhone. Money is to keep track of money. Recently got a Monzo account, which is interesting. Um, storage, etc. is just some other bits that I haven't used. DeviantArt can be quite good for like phone backgrounds, but the app's really dodgy. Um, some old stuff laying around in Mega as well. And the Reddit app when I need it. Dark Sky is a good weather app, uh, which I don't use anymore. In this file, which is called miscellaneous, it's just literally some old games and stuff. Secret hint here, if you see me play Pocket Camp, which you see me play quite a lot when I'm doing reviews and stuff, I don't actually play it really. I just use it because I think it looks nice and it fits well aesthetically. Apple is all the apps from Apple that you can't really, well, I feel like I can't get rid of. And video is some stuff in here. TikTok, which is becoming really popular now. And Adobe Capture I've talked about before, which lets you capture colors and film is just some film filters and stuff. Um, and the, these two apps on the end are just like ones that I kind of use occasionally. So you might be wondering why I don't have any apps here. And the reason is because I like to have somewhere to put my finger when I'm scrolling between the two pages. I don't want to accidentally click something. And also I think it just looks really messy if you've got a full page. I wish iOS would let you have a bit more control over how the homepage looks. I understand why they don't because that's a very Android thing to do. And you know, it's a focus on simplicity, right? So I guess it makes sense. But I think if it's full, it looks like a total mess and I don't like it. So that's why I have a bit of a gap there and the rest of them on here. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up everything I've got here on the phone. Nothing you haven't seen before, but some interesting insights to how I have it set up. So that pretty much rounds up this video. If you enjoyed it, pop a like. If you loved it, pop a sub. And if there's any apps you think I should try out, please mention them in the comments below and I'll give them a go. I'm always open to finding new things and I will see you all in the next one.